Diablo 4 Season 4 is looking to be even more of a season of companions compared to even Season 3 with massive buffs to not only necromancer minions but also druid companions. And in fact, I actually believe that the companion build is one of the best if not the best way for druids to start in Season 4. Not only because these companions will start doing much more damage than before and are much more survivable, but also since this is a build that will actually allow you to easily pivot to many other, perhaps more meta builds in the endgame. And even if you do decide to stick with companions throughout the endgame, it should still be fairly viable as well, especially with the new support coming in the form of new affixes, as well as tempering options. Starting out, you would honestly do fine with Poison Creeper being such a strong early game skill and then just putting additional points into walls since they got extremely massively buffed. Even after the PTR, they got yet another health and respawn rate buff. But after that, you can easily pivot. For example, with Season 4 Season Journey, you actually get a set of pulverized gear so you can easily go into a companion focused pulverized build. And of course, if you have the Shepherd's Aspect, which you can get from a dungeon by the way, you can pretty much combo companions and get a massive buff on any core skill, even rat skill that you prefer to play, right? If even say Pulverize might not be your favorite skill to play with, you can easily still viably play Companions plus Lightning Storm, for example, or Tornado, or Shred, again, depending on your personal preferences, as well as the gear that you can get to drop, right? And sort of an unnoticed change is that Shepherd's Aspect will actually also benefit your rat skills, massively buffing their damage, so you could easily roll with, say, a Rabies build, especially if you find the aspect of the Alpha, or you could run some kind of Hurricane build, which I might very well try out for myself, combined with some of the new tempering options to increase your Hurricane's duration. And not only that, but the rework Clarity passive adds further damage to, again, either Core skills or Rat skills whenever you activate a Pet skill. So this could easily combo with, say, Rabies or Hurricane, massively and I mean extremely massively compared to previous seasons buffing their damage and making for cool new fun builds. And really quick as for how to actually progress and start season 4 more optimally, you definitely want to focus on health heights as this will very likely be the fastest way to level up and also get geared. Although of course later on you would want to do some nightmare dungeons and such and perhaps do some of the boss ladder to get some of your uniques if you need any and also level up your glyphs, right? But anyway, coming back to Health Hide, some tips to offer there is that you definitely want to focus on the new Iron Wolves reputation as in you want to look for Iron Wolves quests and whispers and events to be able to get Iron Wolves reputation as that will actually unlock you various perks like gear as well as tempering recipes as well. And of course, you definitely want to try to stack Whispers with Helltide as much as you can as you'll be able to do the turn-ins and get some Varshan mats and get some additional gold. And for another cool tip for leveling up in Helltides is that you should save your Cinders to turn in at the end of each Helltide round because turning in your Cinders as in opening up the chest will actually give you EXP as well. So by the time you gather up a lot of cinders and it's towards the end of a hell tide, when you go and open up a bunch of chests, assuming that you'll be at a higher level towards the end of that hell tide, right, or each hell tide round, you'll actually also get increased EXP based on your character's current level from opening these chests. So that would be, in terms of experience, as long as you don't die, of course, and lose your cinders, the fastest way to farm experience with hell tides. Now onto progression into the season, starting with aspects, you again definitely want to get the Shepherd's Aspect as soon as you can, and this comes from the Blood Soaked Crag Dungeon in the Dry Steps. So again, the Shepherd's Aspect will increase your core and rat skill damage by 6-10% for each companion that you have. And then another one that you want to pick up from dungeons is likely going to be Night Howler's Aspect as it'll turn your Blood Howl into an AoE spell and grant not only yourself crit chance but also crit chance to your companions as well and thus boosting all of your DPS. 
And in terms of farmed aspects though, you can, again, base this largely on your current playstyle, but one that would be really useful in general for most if not all builds that you want to combo companions with, there's the aspect of the stampede, which will give you one additional companion to each of your companion skills, right? So that's like two poison creepers up from one, one more raven up from however many you have, depending on how you spec, and then another wolf in addition to the original two, giving you three wolves. And this will all contribute to the damage added from the shepherd's aspect as well, and thus giving you a bit of synergy there. And for yet another all-rounded good aspect for leveling up, and this isn't necessarily related to companions, but I thought I would shout it out anyway. No pun intended. Um, this is the aspect of Echoing Fury, which previously was only usable by barbarians, but now will actually be usable by druids as whenever you shout, with debilitating roar and blood howl being categorized as shouts in this patch, it will actually also gain spirit per second. And this can be farmed from the Sirocco Caverns in Kedjistan. So this is just a good aspect for leveling up in general, which will also kind of help shore up one of the main weaknesses of druids, especially in the early game, which is the lack of spirit, right? Especially if you're running with a core skill as well, which usually you would be. And now getting into itemization, which saw the largest changes in this patch. First of all, for affixes, a lot of them were greatly simplified. So the general things you want to look for are getting to the armor cap, which has a new cap by the way in season 4, which is around 9,300 or slightly less than that. You can easily hit that with ancestral gear comboed with just a couple of flat armor rolls as your affixes by the way, and also maybe one or two percentage armor or total armor rolls through tempering, but I'll get into more depth on tempering later on. And I'm not sure exactly how many of these rules you'll need, but it should be easy enough to figure out basically the minimum that you would need to get to. And by the way, I do have some character templates set up using max roll that you can check out linked below. So with that, you kind of want to make sure you hit your minimum requirements for defense, which again is getting to that 9000 plus armor cap and also trying to get capped on resistances as well. However, you want to do that through say your sockets in your jewelry and just some of the resistance rules on your jewelry. And you can also get resistance rules on some of the defensive pieces, namely your chest and pants and perhaps on your helm as well. And now going into some of the more offensive affixes, and again, defense is very important in season four because damage reduction affixes were pretty much removed making defense much more difficult to come by, although the armor cap was actually reduced. Um, I think this actually enables maximum life, which by the way rolls on a lot of different pieces now, including your weapon, a very valuable affix too that you can definitely consider picking up whenever there's nothing else that's a bit more important to you. And with that, going to some of the other generally good affixes, you have cooldown reduction, which comes on your helm, your amulet, and also your offhand if you're using an offhand. Notably, you can also get plus two walls on your helm. Previously, this is more of a joke as people didn't really bother with companion damage, but with season four, that has obviously changed. So I would recommend getting plus four to walls on your helm. And for other offensive affixes, as again, your companions will be inheriting 100% of your stats, you'll probably want to get something like attack speed and critical strike chance on your gloves. Maybe even on your weapon, you can also get attack speed, but you can't get crit chance. So primary stat would also be really good, say on your weapon or on any other piece. For your rings, you can also get attack speed and crit chance. There's also a new affix, which is lucky hit to make enemies vulnerable. That should be pretty good as well. You can probably pick one of those up. And then movement speed, of course, I personally really like. Um, I think most players value movement speed, and again, you can get that to roll on amulets and boots. And you can also temper them as well, but I'll get into tempering in a little bit more depth. And one more group of affixes I'd like to quickly highlight are resource-oriented ones, and there are actually some new additions in Season 4, such as Spirit Per Second, which can be greatly helpful, especially while leveling up with a core skill, which can spawn on your chest piece and I believe helm as well. And another one that we gained was spirit on kill, which if you combo both should greatly alleviate your spirit issues. So you can actually get spirit on kill on your offhand and your ring as well. You can also actually get spirit on kill on your amulet, 
but I don't generally believe there is enough space on the amulet as there's too many useful affixes that you can get on it. And with that onto tempering, if you are a companion enthusiast like me, you'll be very pleased to know that there are tons of new tempering options that specifically buff your companion, such as wolf attack speed, which is probably the most significant one, but there's also things like companion damage up to 95% from the looks of it, and also plus two clarity, which again, the clarity passive buffs your wrath or core skills whenever you cast a companion skill, right? So you can actually temper plus to clarity on your rings and amulet, getting up to a total of plus six. Some other useful tempering options include movement speed as well, again, on your amulet and boots, so you can get kind of a double movement speed roll. And depending on what you're running in combination with your companion skills, you can also temper some other stuff, like if you're going rabies, you can consider rabies duration, you can also consider more defensive options like debilitating, roar, duration, or cooldown. There are actually a lot of different options depending on what you need and your playstyle. And by the way, for tempering, just remember that you can only temper one of each category on a piece of gear, right? For example, it is categorized into offensive, defensive, and utility, and some pieces can only temper several types. For example, some of the more defensive pieces like helmets can only receive defensive or utility tempering. So you can have one of each essentially, but other more offensive pieces will be able to get say one offensive affix and also a utility affix. And then weapons also have a specific category to them. Although I don't think the weapon augments are as significant for companion builds specifically, but can still be really interesting for say companion plus a core or rat skill hybrid. And as for specific builds, I did put together a few theory crafted pet hybrid builds such as a shout rabies pet druid using flesh render and double shouts and also bold chieftain's aspect to reduce the cooldown on shouts to deal AoE damage through both the shouts as well as rabies and then have your pets fill in with single target damage and also even running storms companion and have another example build with landslide where i'm comboing landslide with pets and also using the new unique earthbreaker and also the new aspect of vocalized empowerment to generate resource which by the way earlier i think i said bold chieftain but the name has indeed changed to vocalize empowerment but anyway you can check out these builds, but later on when I do hone in on some specific builds and the meta develops further into Season 4, I'll be sure to make a follow-up guide or guides with the best builds to follow up on this video. One build I'm particularly looking to try will either be this Flesh Render Shell pet build or a variant of this using Hurricane and also using tempering to buff my hurricane, namely the hurricane cooldown reduction, perhaps hurricane damage, and also on the weapons, hurricane duration. Having a near perma or perma hurricane, that again gets buffed massively through the clarity passive, right, which is also getting buffed through tempering as well. And that's pretty much it for my initial preview of the Companion Druid and Associated Hybrid Builds. I'll be sure to follow up this video with some actual build guides to some of the best companion focused builds, such as I'll definitely be trying out the Hurricane build with companions. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that video or those videos. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think or if you have other suggestions down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to reply to your comment. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. Happy hunting. Peace.